Morning and thanks for being with us. Happy Friday. We have a great show today to start off the weekend. I'm Heather Abraham and so glad to be with you. And I'm excited to talk with our first guest this morning. He's Pittsburgh native and writer, director of the hit film Made Here, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Now, Stephen Shabosky, the director and co-writer for a major motion picture opening nationwide next week called Wonder. I know I'll never be an ordinary kid. Foggy. If they stare, let them stare. People don't like to touch me because they think I'm contagious. The film is based on a best-selling book and stars Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. It's an inspiring story of a boy born with facial differences with a message that you can't blend in when you're born to stand out. And we want to welcome Stephen Shabosky, who co-wrote the screenplay and also directed the film. He's back home in Pittsburgh in advance of its nationwide release on November 17th. You're from Upper St. Clair, so it's it's really home for you. It is quite, yes. I, lo I love, I, I always tell the studio, whenever I'm promoting anything, I'm coming home. You have to send me home. Right. I need to have O's fries. I need to have that. <laughs> I need cold. My God, is it cold? Right. And, and I need to be closer to, to the stadium. So here I am. Oh, well, it's good to have you. Thank and you. What, what tremendous work you've done. Tell us about the film that's coming up, Wonder. Wonder is about a little boy, um, Augie Pullman, who has a cranial facial difference. And he uh, enters a mainstream school for the first time. His mother, played by Julia Roberts, homeschools him. And now he's ready to go into a mainstream school. And he goes, and it's. Um, it's not just about his, the, the, the impact of the decision on his life, it's about his sister and about his friends and, and, and what that one little act and how all these acts of kindness um, come together to make everybody a, a little bit better. And, and you and I were just talking national, um, well, kind of stay here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's, it's coming Monday. up on Monday. Yes. And so uh, the tagline to your movie kind of fits into yeah, all of that. Yeah, the tagline of the movie is Choose Kind. It's based on a Wayne Dyer quote. Uh, when given the choice between being right and, and, and being kind, choose kind, which is a beautiful, beautiful saying and something that we try to live by on set. And, and when we were making the film, there's like no yelling. There was no, no, everyone just kind of ate their feelings. I put on 20 pounds. I'm finally losing <laughs> it. So that was it. The O's prize didn't help, right? <laughs> no, the O's prize did not help at all. Um, talk about um, how this movie kind of applies now. We see so much bullying that goes on on social media yes. and in schools. And I mean, kids have always been prone to doing this or being affected by it, but so much more now, I feel like, with social media. So what are you hoping that people get and take away from this movie? Well, what I'm hoping is that when people see the film, that, that, that children, because I made the movie for the entire family. Grandparents could love it, parents could love it, and kids could love it. I wanted them to go together and be able to discuss um, what what, what these themes and maybe a parent could say do you want to be a Jack Will or a Julian because anyone that knows this book and soon to know the movie these are characters in it and and it gives a real really honest nice lesson about about how kindness can do a lot of good and how being mean or bullying could do a lot of damage it almost sounds like this is a, a good thing like take your parents take your kids maybe go to dinner afterwards and kind of discuss yeah. how to apply this. In yeah, I, that, that's why we did it. I mean, ultimately, the movie is supposed to entertain. It's very funny. Right. It's very heartwarming, and the performances are great. There's so many great stars in it. You had mentioned Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. They're terrific. Mandy Patinkin from Homeland. Mm -hmm. And uh, David Diggs, who was in Hamilton. He plays the teacher. We have a really great cast, Jacob Tremblay from the movie Room. Um, but ultimately, so you know, the entertainment is kind of a Trojan horse for all those drives home from the theater or, or the dinner afterwards to have a real discussion about, about the kind of world that we want our kids to inherit. And can we talk about the little boy that plays the, the lead role here? Yeah, Jacob Tremblay. He's, I'm telling you, this kid, it's like a lot of us are, are, are old enough to remember when, when Leonardo DiCaprio was this kid in, in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, and you think, who is that kid? Um, or River Phoenix in Stand By Me. Jacob Tremblay is once in a generation talent. It is watching this kid through all of that makeup create this character was inspiring every day. And he's, uh, you know, I don't know. I can't say enough about him. I really can't. So that is all makeup that's on his face? Oh, you better believe it. Wow. Yeah. And so now how did he feel um, portraying that role? I feel like it, as an actor, you kind of have to absorb some of that, what's going on. And so what was his takeaway? Do you know? His this? takeaway, well, look, he got to know a lot of people in the craniofacial difference community. Uh, he made a lot of friends. And he, I know he wanted to do right by them. I have to say for him, it was... You know, Jacob in real life, he's a very mischievous kid. He's funny. You know, he, he's a little prankster, honestly. <laughs> and then he would go into the makeup trailer as Jacob. And then when he would come out with the makeup, he was Augie. 
It was remarkable. Right. He was he was more behaved and he was more focused and all these other things, and and it was lovely. And then he would go back in the makeup trailer and he'd come out and he would be a goofball. Right again. again. <laughs> so yeah, I know that he felt the pressure in, in, in a good way, and felt the the need to really make this uh, uh, portray the the character with a lot of dignity and a lot of humor. All right. So you wrote uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Yes. And of course, it came to life in a movie. So what is it like now? Um, taking a best-selling novel and turning that into a movie. You, you probably understand the importances of, of making sure there's enough detail to everything. 100%. You know, I, I direct movies almost like an author would. And when I was doing this movie, because this book is beloved, it, I think there's 6 million copies worldwide sold, and, and which means probably 20, 25 million people have read it. This is beloved, and you can't, you can't get that wrong. So I included R.J. Palacio, the author, in every decision, and, and she was my secret weapon. She yeah. was really good. She was great with casting. She had a lot of good uh, opinions about a lot of things. And so, yeah, it's important to get the details right. It's important to get the spirit of the thing right. It's important to get plenty of humor and to make sure that ultimately the movie captures at least the spirit of the book. Yeah. If you can't have everything, that's fine. But if you have the same uplift at the end, then it works. And so uh, how did this impact you? after uh, directing it and being so involved in the movie? You know, I have to say, and it sounds like a cliche, but you know, when I started the movie, I said, we're making a movie about kindness, and you, you can only do a movie with kindness properly through kindness. Right. And so I said, there'll, there'll be no yelling on set. We're not gonna do, you know, we're gonna be good. Even if we have disagreements, it's totally fine, but we're not gonna yell about it. We're gonna have our manners, and especially in front of the kids, right? Right. Everyone embraced it. And I said, and that rule applies to everyone, especially me. Uh -huh. So if I get out of, out, of, you know, out of hand, you let me know. Luckily, I never did. Um, by being that way for a year and a half in a row, mm -hmm. um, as, as, a, as a philosophy, I was a better person. I'm a better father, a better husband, a better artist, you name it. It, it, was, it was strange, actually. It's, like, okay. it's almost like going to church for a year and a half in a row and coming out the other side and saying, oh, okay. some of that really sunk in. Wow. Uh, what's next for you? I just finished my second novel in two decades. Uh, <laughs> uh, I finished it two weeks ago today. Great. So I'm really thrilled. Thank you. I can't talk about it because it's, it's top secret. Oh. I'm very sorry. I trust me. I will be back on this couch in Great. about a mm, year and a half um, when it comes out. Okay. And, and That's I'm, when you're expecting it to be released. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. But right now it's all about wonder. I'm so excited about this movie. So. All right. Well, yeah. great. Good work. Thanks Thank to, you. Thanks I really to appreciate be here. It. Thanks to be back with us. Uh, don't miss Wonder. <clears throat> Excuse me. In theaters nationwide next Friday, November 17th, with a screenplay co-written and directed. <laughs> Excuse me, by <laughs> Pittsburgh guy Stephen Shabosky. Congratulations. Really does look like a fantastic film. Thank you.